VW Golf 1.4 TSI, the single charge one, so not the super, not the supercharged, just a single turbocharger. Uh, CAXA engine code, and as you can hear, there's this ringing metal metallic noise coming from the engine. So we suspect it's the timing chain that's noisy, and we'll just check the fault codes because the engine light is also on. So our fault code list is like this. And this is the main one we're going to be looking at as being a potential issue. We've got this P0016 Bank 1 cam sensor G40 against engine speed sensor G28, so the crank sensor, incorrect correlation. So this is telling us the timing is incorrect on the vehicle. Which makes sense with our noise that we're hearing. The timing is either jumped or it's such a stretched chain that it's touching the housing or something like that causing that ringing sound and as you can imagine it's got the engine light lit as well and the noise increases with engine rpm as well so i've gone around and unplugged the coolant bottle got the two t25 bolts out and i've got the uh, reservoir for, sorry the, the charcoal filter canister out for the evap system the fuel tank breather and I've got all these T30 bolts out of this engine cover so we can remove this cover now once we've unclipped all the hoses off of it. There we can see we're going to be splitting this section from this section so we're going to be taking this timing cover off of the engine. So we're going to start by detensioning our belt, which is just that 16 millimeter, not the top one, the second one down. So we're going to do this one that's down here. So that one we're going to we're going to turn this anti-clockwise, and it's going to release the belt. So we're underneath the car now, and the first thing we've done is remove the under tray, and we're going to now drain the oil out of the car because we're probably going to have to take the sun off to do this time and chain job. Um, so, and as well, it'll be just nice to flush the oil um, if you're doing a timing chain. To have fresh oil in for a fresh timing chain is always a good um, way to go because it's only the oil being poor quality that, that wears these uh, chains out and stretches them or lengthens them, I should say. So, because we're doing a DSG clutch and a timing chain, I'm actually removing this engine. So, as you can see, I've actually soaked the uh, exhaust flanges penetrating spray so we can get these nuts undone and not break the studs and we can get this exhaust section out because obviously even if we're doing it in the car we'd need it off to get this sump off anyway so yeah we're going to drop the whole lot out the bottom and then we'll uh, split the uh, gearbox off of the engine and then we can do our timing chain separately and our clutch separately rather than taking the gearbox mount off this side to take the gearbox out and then needing to take the engine mount off this side to do the timing chain it means the two jobs end up being separate we can sort of overlap a little bit of work here and, and make our life easier. So as we're taking the engine out, I'm leaving the AC compressor behind with the car so we don't have to degas it. So it's just three 13mm bolts to go through the housing and one wiring plug on up here. There we go. And then obviously the belt being off already. We've got this exhaust section off, so under the sump is gone. So we can drop the engine straight down. We did separate it from the rubber just because this wouldn't go through the gap. So you can see that's so much more compact with just the, the mounts on it. Disconnects the O2 sensor. And we're just going around disconnecting wiring plugs now. So we're disconnecting stuff that's part of the chassis. So this is part of the chassis harness, the gearbox and O2 sensor plugs, I believe. Um, so we'll um, just go around doing stuff like that, basically. Drain the oil out of it, and our next job is going to be to undo these um, spline, I think they're spline tens or triple square tens, whatever you want to call them. Uh, so, we're going to undo these drive shafts each side because obviously the gearbox is going to be coming down, and we're going to leave all the um, axles behind in the car, hopefully. So, just a quick update of where we're at. We've uh, unbolted the uh, main power wire off of the back of the alternator, unplugged the uh, control for the alternator. Um, there was a mounting bracket, a P-clip for the, the wiring and we've got the wiring just dropped out of the way and it actually clipped along the top of this catalytic converter here. So 
So this is going to obviously stay with the chassis, so we're just going to disconnect all of this, take it out of this gearbox mount, um, and then yeah, that's going to be another thing out of the way. We've got to have this alternator off the car anyway to do the uh, the timing chain. So it will just overall, it will just make the whole thing easier. And we've also got the axles unbolted from the car, so we can hopefully get those out of the way and just push them to one side while the engine comes down so we'll just have to maneuver it around that maneuver around that inlet manifold when we come down because this is as far back as this will go worst case scenario we just unbolt the center bolt and just take the drive shaft completely out so we've still got as we can see there our heater hoses to disconnect to so we'll get those done now brake boost the pipe etc so we're just removing the battery the battery box underneath and I'm removing the air box so we can get to the gearbox mount and we can easily do all the selector cable and everything. So we're back up top and just an update, we've disconnected the fuel line here, disconnected both of the, the heater hoses on the bulkhead there, so they're both off. And they're just those quick release, pull the, uh, the clip out and then work them back gently. Um, what else have we got done? We've obviously got all our, our lines off of the... Um, charcoal filter we're going to take the reservoir hopefully with the engine like that we're going to have to take this strap off here so the 213s we fed our uh, battery positive wiring from the alternator up to um, inside the quarter here so that's all good um, got our top radiator and bottom radiator hoses i took the the fan shroud out which is just four t30s in each corner and, a, and an electrical wiring plug for fans that was just down at the bottom there so that just gives us that extra clearance because the fans will be out to here. So we've then got, you know, properly 50, cent, 50 uh, millimeters, five centimeters worth of clearance extra maybe. So that's going to help us when we remove this engine because we're probably going to want to come forward just a little bit just to clear the gearbox over the subframe. And as we will look in, the inlet manifold is slightly over that drive shaft. So we'll have to bear that in mind. Uh, we can see the aircon compressor as well. I've taken the alternator out as it was just the two 13 mil bolts remaining. So we'll be able to push this compressor just underneath the front panel. So we'll be able to drop the engine down and it not be in our way. So we're pretty much there. We've just got to chase the, the wiring harness for the engine now. So I think it's going to be too difficult to get it off the engine side. So we might have to take the, the shroud uh, off here, the wipers and, the, and the, uh, the scuttle panel off just to get the ECU, which is underneath, just tucks underneath under the bottom of the glass here. We are going to take the wires off the engine ECU. So panel remove the wipers just two 13 mil nuts hold them on and then we can get them off the um off the taper there um so we've just rocked them back as a forward to get them off the taper um we've pulled this scuttle panel off which you just lift at the front once the rubber is popped off and you can pop it out this back rubber down the back uh we need to use a bit of silicon spray on that to, to put that back in just so it does go in easily otherwise we'll struggle we can now see our engine ecu and our wiring plugs here uh, so we're going to actually just trace them through the bulkhead and the way that they run down along down this chassis rail and then across here so we're just going to trace this backwards and then we'll just disconnect it all the way along here and just pull it out from there so another update we see this ecu in the last little clip um i've now just taken these uh, nut off of here and a bolt out of here just two 10 mils and we've managed to remove this central panel and that's allowed us to get access to remove these wires yeah. and I've chased the loom out from down here. Uh, and now it's just chucked on top of the engine. So we've got the engine crane over to one side. I've got the engine hanging and the gearbox hanging on these two chains. One onto the gearbox wire down there and one onto this engine uh, lifting here. We've got the equipment reservoir on top like I said. Um, yeah, so you can see we're clearing the compressor down here. It's all free. We're clearing the radiator, no problem. And we're just about clearing the subframe down here also. So you just have to keep lifting this axle out of the way. I'm just making sure this one's not touching the inlet manifold. So we're good in that respect. Um, so yeah, we're pretty much on the floor at the moment. So yeah, we'll go a few more inches down and then we'll uh, lift the car. So that's the engine and the gearbox out on the floor now. And we've got the engine hanging from the crane. So the gearbox is ready to have the clutch pulled out and we'll um, get all that set up later. Uh, what we're going to do now is start pulling all this timing cover off and uh, getting ready to replace the timing chain. 
So we've got this crank pulley that we've got to get off. Um, we've got to take the water pump off. So yeah, um, we will have to take the sump off as well. We probably will end up putting this on an engine stand just to make it easier. So we pulled the water pump pulley off, just those uh, spline and tens, and just pulling that pulley off, we can actually get to all the bolts. So it's not like the supercharged model with the uh, drive for the, the magnetic clutch water pump. We can actually do this without removing the water pump, so that's great. Um, we have to remove this pulley uh, to get to the bolts behind it. Just spinning this, see that spinning on way longer than you'd expect it. You can hear the bearing noise as well. So this is also defective, obviously that's up to the customer whether they want to replace it or not. But just uh, things like this you should be looking out for whenever you take a belt off. So we've started to uh, make progress on getting this timing cover off. I've gotten all the 5 mil Allen keys out from around the perimeter. I've just got one behind here that I need to undo and the one's underneath the sump. So you can see they're all out. I've also got these 16 millimeter ones that basically are making this strength for the engine mount. They're all out and I've got this breather pipe out of the top and I've screwed that bolt back in. And I've got this bracket for this uh, coolant pipe, the turbo coolant um, lines. That bolt is out as well just so we can get this bracket off. So our next step is going to be pull this crank pulley off so it's going to be undo this big 21 mil bolt and we can get this off, get the rest of the bolts out and we'll get the ones out of the sump as well and we'll pop this cover off. Do this in here also. So we've now got all the bolts out, so we're just going to try and pop this cover off. So this is now loose. Just catching on this front crank seal. So we've got broken guides and no guides. There are no guides on the chain. How has this not been catastrophic? So there we can see there is no drive guide. This piece has fallen out. guide is still in one piece half the guide is down here so this was our noise when we were running there's a piece of guide here come look this was running no no then the boshy on me so that's undone as well, look, because the, the chain has actually undone. Really? With it rotating clockwise, yeah. it's actually hit this and undone it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, that's yeah. the stud for the... Yeah, maybe two... That's the stud for the... Two weeks running more? Well, not even. I reckon that would have... If that drove out of here, I think that would have... Um, really bad. Really bad. I've never seen one do this, actually. No, no. Not seen one that's um, broken guides, Me like this, this bad. Me neither. I, I saw the, the, the guys Stretch rolling, chains, you know? mainly. Stretch chains. Another cup, another in this. Wow. Yeah, the car is still running. That's still cool. running. No guide. That's good. Cool. That's be probably because it was on this side, so the timing will just retard. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the yeah, timing yeah. will just turn in, backwards. In that way, yeah, I know what you mean. And, and you know, this and the that tensioner one will gone, just take the slack, yeah, so we yeah, can probably yeah. push this out. I don't know if we can, but... No. This way? Will it go out, like to, to tension the chain? Oh, you look at this. See, so that's gonna go out as best as it can to try and tighten that. But the tension is not gonna be able to, I'm surprised no, that has, no, I'm no. really surprised that hasn't bent the valves. And then look at the engine. Yeah. Really dirty. Well, the oil was only been done four months ago and it was, it was black. I don't know, because, yeah, maybe that car has been for a long time without service, you know? Okay, not doing service. So we've just been trying to work out how this hasn't actually, you know, with all that slack, how this hasn't been worse than what it is in regards to engine damage. Now that stud that was on the floor there, 
the stud was was screwed in here so this would have been stopping the chain coming past this point and that's actually undone as it's been hit by the chain going clockwise and this is obviously undoes anti-clockwise so this going around it has just done that effect so that spun that out but also when we look at the timing cover we can see clearly it's been actually using the timing cover as its own guide rail basically so this probably was the noise we were hearing was probably um the chain actually rubbing on the aluminium itself so we're on the back of the engine now and as you can see i've got the, the holes out for the timing tool to fit in so we'll just turn this engine over to get this to near tdc and look at the color of the oil that's been dripping out you can just see in there how dirt, dirty the oil has been so this is like the color of the engine oil in a diesel engine not in a petrol engine and this car was only serviced four months ago so i'd say there's a heavy buildup of uh, carbon in this engine and just long extended service intervals i'd say so um yeah we will be wanting to flush this all again in probably 500 or a thousand kilometers after this repair just to get this back on track so because the timing is so far out we can't rely on where the camshafts end up with our locking tool we'll have to uh, time all that up after we take the chain off so what we're going to do is just take this eight millimeter allen key out and that will give us a um a thread that we can screw our tool in that will uh, hold the crank at tdc and we'll just get the crank at tdc and then we'll move all the cams to where they need to be to uh to correct this timing.